Come on, make sure you get three people. Tell them God is up to something in your life. Something wonderful is going to break forth in your life. Hallelujah. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Hallelujah. While you're standing, come on, let's celebrate God for the angel of this house. None other than Superintendent Gerald Mandrell. Come on. We celebrate the God that's in him, the anointing that's upon his life. Come on, you ought to do better than that. Clap those hands. Hallelujah. Thank God for Evangelist Mandrell. Come on. Come on, let's praise God for it tonight. Hallelujah. While you're clapping, thank God for Pastor Colbert. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank God for First Lady Colbert tonight. We ought to just bless God for all the people that lead us. Hallelujah. God bless you tonight. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And so we count it an honor to be here tonight. I thank God for Jesus tonight. I thank God for Jesus tonight. Amen. Amen. I, I've been in ministry now for 26 years. And, and I, when I go places, I don't go for numbers. I go for who God ordained to be there. Amen. You ought to tell your neighbor, you're in the right place at the right time. Tell them for, for whatever reason you showed up. You're in the right place at the right time. Amen. And so we're excited about what the Lord is going to do in this place tonight. I'm really excited. I thank God for um, a portion of alarm being here tonight. Thank God for you. Amen. Um, a lot of them had to go to um, Thomasville tonight. We have service in Thomasville, and one of the elders is ministering over there tonight. The Lord is really blessing us tremendously in Thomasville. When I tell you, I'm seeing God do some great and mighty things, and I'm excited about what he's doing um, in Thomasville. But more than that, I'm so excited about what God is going to do tonight. Amen. I'm excited about what he's going to do tonight. Thank God for Pastor Lisa in her absence tonight. Amen. Amen. I think in all the years we've been married, it's only been maybe once or twice, Pastor. She told me I couldn't go somewhere and preach. And it was because my body needed rest. Any other time, she said, you better do what the Lord told you to do. Amen. Sometimes I'm saying, tell me to stay home. Tell me to get some rest. Amen. So we bless God for her and thank God for uh, my sons, Jared and Gerard. Amen. Bless God for them tonight. And um, I have such a wonderful assignment tonight. Ooh, I'm so excited about the word of God tonight. My God, my God, my God. Amen. Now, you, you got to understand something. The word of God tonight is, although we're talking about Levites and, and um, we, we, we're in a stage now, we're in a time now where most people who um, are in music ministry or in the ministry of the arts, they, they really don't understand the responsibility that they have. Most people that are in the music ministry or in the arts, they think it's about um, just their ability to sing and, and ability to dance and, and perform. But when we take our minds to a kingdom mindset, there's a greater depth that God has called us to. If you understand something about Levites, Levites were the ones that were responsible for making sure the presence of the Lord stayed in the house. Mm -hmm, that, that stayed in the house. Levites were consistent with making sure the presence and the glory stayed in the house. They, they were not concerned about what was popular. Amen. They, they, they weren't concerned about that. They weren't concerned about that's the hottest hit. They were only concerned about making sure that there was a glory in the house of God. 
that if anybody walked in the house of God, even if the man of God didn't preach, people got exactly what they needed. And so my assignment tonight is to take you into a depth of God's word and really dig into this word to show you as a Levite um, the authority that you have. Most time as Levites, we think we just sing. But there is a kingdom governmental authority that's on the life of everybody that's responsible for keeping the glory in the house. Amen, somebody. Now watch this. Now watch this. Watch, watch this. With, with, with the tabernacle, everything, God, I'm moving too fast. Every, everything was in place. So that tells me there was somebody that kept the tabernacle clean. Okay. Mm -hmm. So even cleaning uh -huh, the tabernacle, they had to have a responsibility to keep the glory. See, don't think just because you're cleaning, you're not adding to the glory of God. Uh, I'll get somebody in a minute, but... Let, let's go to the word of God. 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 Let's stand for the reading of the word of God. And um, I'm going to try to do my best. Amen. I, tell you, I feel the anointing of God. Amen. Amen. Pastor, I, I made up my mind. Um, I travel all the time. And I'm in and out of the airport traveling, driving in cars, preaching here, preaching there. I thank God for it. But I made my mind up a few years ago. I am not trying to be the greatest preacher. I just want to be one that's known for being effective. I just want to be effective. Amen. If anybody calls me, I want them to call, call me because I'm effective. Not because I can get you to a place of emotionalism. But when you leave here, you're empowered to do something. Amen, somebody. Let's go to Genesis. That's, that's Genesis. Let's go to Genesis 49 and 10. <clears throat> 49 and 10. And put your finger there and go to Psalms 108 and verse 8. Hallelujah. I like to hear pages turning. Amen. Amen. That means somebody came to get something. Amen. Genesis 49 and 10, you have it? Come on, let's read together. It says, the scepter shall not depart from who? Can keep reading? Until shallow come. And until him shall the gathering of the people be. Come on, let's go to Psalms 108 and verse 8. Are you there? Come on, let's begin reading. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of my head. Judah is my lawgiver. I want to talk to you about Judah, the lawgiver. Father, we thank you. We honor you tonight. Thank you for your presence. We pray now that you would give us precision in the spirit. Speak to us tonight. Hide me behind the cross. Take a hot cold from the altar. Place it upon my lips and I'll speak only what you declare in this house tonight. And Father, we pray now that everyone that will have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying, that their lives are empowered, change, and brought to another dimension in you. We give you glory and we give you praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of my head. Judah is my lawgiver. There's something remarkable or something um, supernatural that's contained 
um, within the life of a Levite, which um, is contained within praise and worship. Th there is a mystery to be understood when you tap into the depth, the height and breadth and the width um, of the essence of praise and worship. God has given us access to his kingdom and he has given us a responsibility to govern the earth uh -huh. we now possess the task of reconnecting our homeland so that we can effectively operate in and enforce the kingdom law within the earth you are not a citizen of this earth mm -hmm. Let me work that for a moment. You are not a citizen of this earth. You are an inhabitant of you are an inhabitant of the earth, but you are a citizen from the kingdom of God. Your habitation in this earth is solely for the purpose of establishing heaven on earth. As such, you have been sent to this earth as an ambassador of heaven. Mm -hmm. You may live here in the earth for a time, but your governing authority comes from a foreign estate. As a matter of law, you are supposed to maintain diplomatic immunity in the earth. It ensures safe passage and you are considered um, not susceptible to the laws that are outlined by this world system because you are an ambassador you have a right to operate my God in the earth as if you were still residing in heaven in other words you are supposed to live here like you would live there mm -hmm. uh -huh. there the, the reason that we don't experience the privileges and power of our position as ambassadors or Levites or those that are responsible for keeping the presence of God in the house is that we have been here too long. That we have forgotten the laws of our homeland. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when this system treats you in a negative way, we don't know the right response. As kingdom citizens, you should know the right response because you are not from here. Mm -hmm. Our lack of knowledge causes us to perish. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor in this season, I will not perish. Well, I need somebody to hit somebody real good and say in this season, I will not perish. Now the Bible says, the Bible says, I'm just laying a foundation right quick. But the Bible says in Psalms that Judah is my lawgiver. Judah comes from the Hebrew word Yahada, which comes from the Hebrew word Yada. Yada in Hebrews mean hand, especially a hand that is in use or operation. Mm -hmm. This hand is doing something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Somebody say it's doing something. Uh -huh. Yada comes from the Hebrew word yad that refers to not only a hand but an open hand. Mm -hmm. The hand of power, the hand of means, the hand of direction. So from this understanding, we can see that you have an open hand of power, means, and direction that is doing something, which is connected to praise. Every Levite that understand the truth of their calling, God gives you power, means, and direction. Woo! You ought to look at your neighbor and say, I have power, means, and direction. Therefore, Judah gives us access mm -hmm, of the hand of God. Permit me to say it this way. Judah will move the hand of God. 
Mm -hmm. Praise and worship and celebration and adoration and reverence has the power to take God's open hand and put in motion everything that your situation needs. Uh -huh. uh, I wish I had somebody that would just take a few moments and open God's hand. Well, you'll get it in a minute. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. See, you'll get this tomorrow because anytime you give God praise, what you're really telling God, take your hands and move for me. Without you even saying, God, I need you to move here, God just say, if you praise me, I'll move. You ought to nudge your neighbor and say, you got an open hand over your life. Y'all sit down. Let me let me try to work this. So, so it, it means the open hand of God. So the word of God declares Judah is a lawgiver. Lawgiver in the Hebrew is Shekak, which means to watch this engrave or to enact, appoint, decree, or govern. This says to me that when you connect to Judah, you step into an authority where you can enact some things to happen. You can appoint some things to happen. You can decree some things to happen. And you have government over things that's not happening and tell them to come forth. See, that's why, that's why I don't play with folk that come to church and and they just want to sit there for a popularity contest and, and want somebody to call their name. Oh, no, no. I come because there are times I need God to do something. And if ain't nobody else walking in their authority, I'm going to make so much noise that God will have to step in and change some things in my life. Look at your neighbor and say, your praise is a lawgiver. And so what happens is, as a Levite, let me, let me work this for a moment. As a Levite, when you stand before the people to praise, when you stand before the people to praise, I've been teaching my praise team and my music ministry that when you stand before the people, and if for some reason service or the atmosphere doesn't go the way you think it should go, don't blame the people. Because you're the Levite. You're the Levite that has the power to enact things to happen. Now, as a Levite, he gave you authority over atmosphere. Oh, y'all missing it. Y'all miss he, he gives you authority over atmosphere. That's why as a Levite, if this entire row is sitting here broke, busted, and disgusted, all it needs is one Levite to stand up and give God what's due. Ain't got to say nothing to nobody on this row. Just start praising God and say, you know what? I'm going to enact that this entire row give God some praise because I have the authority to change and shift atmospheres. You have authority and power. We don't need people in our church just to stand there talking about we crossing over one by one. Oh no. I tell the elders and something, I said, you don't get up there and tell the people about, um, Y'all don't you oh sit down no 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 don't be fussing at the people you're the Levite oh see y'all don't like this kind of teaching here you you you're the Levite see the Bible say we perish for the lack of knowledge so if I'm gonna be here in charge to shift the atmosphere then I need to understand my authority so when I get up here the atmosphere always changes. I wish I had every Levite just shout out loud and say, I'm anointed to change every atmosphere. Mm -hmm. 
that? You, you, you just go, go on your job tomorrow. You, you waiting on three weeks. But don't you know as a Levite, watch this. I'm finna say something. As a Levite, you have the power to tell time to wait. And then you have power to tell time, hurry up. See, that's why you don't, that's why praisers are always blessed. Because they praise if nobody else is praising. They praise if everybody else looking like, oh God, when you're coming through. Well, I don't have to know when you're coming through. I got praise to tell God, come on now, come on. Yo, sit down. Let me let me work. Let me work. Let me let me work. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, the Bible says that as a Levite, I got 15 more minutes. Let me know. A, a Levite, a Levite, a Levite has the power, and I think this is the truth that most um, people in the arts or in music ministry don't understand. They don't understand that when God has called you to be a Levite, He instantly anoints you with authority. See, that, that, that's why you got to be careful because there's some folk that can't sing but can shift an anointing. And there's some folk that can sing and ain't doing nothing. And the only thing you're doing, you jumping with them and they just jumping and ain't nothing going on. Okay, y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't ready for it. Y'all 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 ain't ready. Because it's a danger for a person to ever find out their authority. If you ever find out your authority, you'll tell the devil, wait a minute, you out of place. See, we got to, we got to get this thing right that we call music. R remember, 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 I told you in the introduction, I said, as, as a kingdom citizen, you're, you're not from here. You're from another place. So why is it that we come here and try to conform to that? If anything, they should conform to us. Okay. I know, I know, I know rapping is in. I'm going to come over here. Just in case y'all shoot me. I know rapping is in. And I know you're trying to say it reaches this generation. But why do we have to always conform to the world? The reason we, um, we conform to the world is that we've been here too long. You've been in this mindset too long that says the only way I can fit in and change something if I act like them. But don't you understand that when God calls you a Levite, you set the standard. Okay. All right. All right. He gives you um, the authority to enact. Um, um, um. To a point, a point, good God Almighty. as a Levite, I can talk to my pastor and say, what the Lord is saying to you, pastor? And you say, this is what the Lord is saying. I feel healing in the atmosphere. I feel in the atmosphere. All right, all right. See, let me tell you something. As, as in this hour, in this hour, you need a voice. See, you need a leader. God help me now that can talk to you and prophesy to you about the season that we're in. And so when he says it's healing in the house, you don't get up there talking about money. Because watch this. You have the power to enact, to put in motion what's in his heart. That's another lesson, let me. And so appoint, decree, and govern. Exodus 31 and 13 and 18 says, And he gave unto Moses when he had made the end of communing with him upon the Mount Sinai. Two tables of testimony, tables of stone, 
written with the finger of God. Now this speaks about the Ten Commandments. And we understand that they are part of the governmental order of God in the Old Testament. The Bible says that God gave Moses the law on tables of stone written by his finger. The law of God was written by his finger. Somebody shout, Judah is a lawgiver. Now, this may seem just a little simple, and, and you may say this is a little elementary, but I, I need you to take your hand, mm -hmm, put it in front of you. What are those five things um, that's on that hand? Your fingers. Uh huh. So what I'm endeavoring to say to you, uh -huh, watch this. Judah <laughs> has the power to move the hand of God. His hand is connected, watch this, to the power which is influence yes, and ability. Yes, Means which is resources and revenue. Yes, mm -hmm. Direction which is the next move. Yes, <laughs> Every Levite, uh -huh. if you understand your authority, every Levite has influence uh huh. Come on, say influence, influence. Ability, ability, resources, resources. Revenue, revenue, and understand the next move. What are you saying, Bishop? No Levite should be broke. Right. Don't shoot me down. Don't shoot me down. Because if you are a Levite, God has a responsibility. To you. Every Levite should be, watch this out. As a Levite, your anointing is to serve and give. How can I give if I'm broke? As a Levite, you should always, watch this, watch this. Always be in the posture to give. Okay, watch this. Why? Because Judah gives you access to a heavenly account. Okay, now watch this. That's why we got people gigging. Am I at a conference? That, that's why we got people gigging in churches. See, you got to understand, Levites were never giggers. Levites were sons. Anytime you hire a gigger, you're not hiring a son. That's all the musicians at my church. I may bless them with a little something. But I tell them one thing. You ain't coming over here and not submit and be a son. The day I find out in the Holy Ghost that you're gigging, I'm firing you. Because gigging only um, disrupt the move of God. What? You ain't never hard up for a musician. You ain't never hard up for somebody to sing. You get the right Levite that can't hold a note. They'll get up here and turn this church upside down because they understand their authority. Now, no indictment, no, no indictment, elder, no indictment. I, I re what's this? No indictment, what's this? I remember, her. don't help me. No indictment. She trying to help me preach. <laughs> I remember when he first started playing. I mean, y'all remember too. And I and I would say, my God, what is Pastor Mandrell doing? But as I begin to study and get into the Word of God, watch this: a daddy can put a son. That's not skillful on an instrument and say play. 
and he maintains the anointing of the house. And the more he allows